Hi everyone. In today's video, I thought we'd go over what I currently have in my fountain pen collection at this time at the end of 2023. I really didn't acquire that much fountain pen wise in 2023. A lot of these were during 2022. But first I'll show you what I currently have inked up. I have one, two, three, four. I have five of these inked at this time. The newest one that I inked up is the Platinum 3776, this one, with Ferris Wheel Press. And honestly, I don't remember the name of the ink. I need to go back and look. It was a, um, it was a pinkish one, but I need to find the name. I don't think it was April Showers, but um, I need to look it up. So that's the newest one. Then this one's been inked for a while, which is why I just need to get it flowing again. It's my Twisby 1.1. That would be this one. It's a stub nib. I actually love the stub nib in Twisby better than their bold nib. Um, the Coeco in with a Paradise Blue cartridge. That's in this one. The Twisby here is a diamond, um, and it's the mini. It's the Emerald of Shavor. And then Pink Glitz is in this other rose gold Twisby. Again, this is a diamond as well. And that's it. So those are the five that I currently have inked. The rest of them are completely empty. So I'll go with uh, these one by one for the history a little bit. So this was my very, very first fountain pen. My first love. This is a Pilot Prera. And the nib on this is, the nib on this is a fine. And I loved this pen. Now, since it was my first, I was always scared to use it. So I only used cartridges. The cartridges that came with it, which were blue, um, that's what I used with it. And I got this pen around 2015 or 2016 and I used it steadily through 2018. When we moved back from Ecuador to the States, my pen burped, I guess you could say, on the airplane. And I ended up with all this blue ink in between the clear portion and the white portion of this lid. So I really didn't know what to do with it since it was my first fountain pen. I knew I could clean it, but I wasn't quite sure how. I had read so many, you know, reviews online, do this, don't do this. One person would say one thing, someone else said something else. It wasn't until Goulet Pens posted a video on how to clean this specific pen that when I watched it completely last year, I finally felt confident enough to take especially this portion, the nib, portion apart in order to get all the ink out of here and it cleaned up beautifully so I can use it again so this is my original love she's just beautiful I'm thinking about putting a pink ink in her a pink or almost red um, because I found the pink inks I can't see very well but um kind of like a reddish pink is what I would love to fill her with next with a cartridge so Love her. If you've ever looked at the Pilot Preras, they're awesome. I love how it writes, and I can't wait to use it again. <clears throat> now, this is kind of my um, next experiment into fountain pens. So, because this one was pricier than what I've usually paid for a pen in the past, and I didn't know how to clean it, I was scared to move on to anything else. So for a while, I was in these Platinum Preppies. They're super easy. They're, again, another cartridge one. So all of these I bought in 2019, and I used them through 2022. Um, so all I had to do was unplug these, replug. None of these ever clogged on me. I never had a clogging issue with any of these or their um, or their inks. And I think in part, it's this amazing mechanism, the spring-loaded mechanism they have in the top because these pens were stored vertically without ink flowing into their nib for a year. How do I know? They were stuck 
on my office desk for almost a year in a pencil case during COVID. And when I got the pencil case back to me, I still hadn't used them in a while. Um, but when I did finally use them, they were not dried out. Now, since then, I've used them all up. I haven't cleaned them out because I plan to use the exact same ink in them in the future. So, you know, I can just give them a brief rinse when I'm ready to do so. But in the meantime, I had found a couple of cute uh, limited edition ones with Hello Kitty on them. So I picked those up off of eBay. These are a 0.3, or I would call them 0.38 millimeter. Um, absolutely love it. So I've kept almost every single one. The only color I don't think I kept was the yellow. I really didn't care for the yellow. Um, it shows up really great, but you know, it just wasn't one I reached for. But all of these, I used up completely, so I saved their bodies because I also know these would be great pens to try out other inks um, that possibly clog because these are so inexpensive in comparison to these, I'd be more adventurous to use a pigment ink or maybe something with a little bit more shimmer in it than I would my more expensive pens. So that's why I hold on to these. All right, so now we'll get into the 2022 by frenzy. So 2022 started out with the Cavecos. So these two, I absolutely loved the Bordeaux and the Olive when I saw them. What I didn't realize is that I wasn't going to actually like them very much. So this one, and it's probably my fault, this one, how I loaded it was I loaded the whole barrel with ink and with the silicone grease and the O-ring and I had a red ink in here and it just always felt like this pen was bleeding on me. My hands were always red with ink and probably if I went with a cartridge, it would have been better. But it's not just that, I just didn't care for this size nib either. It just felt still a little scratchy to me. Seems like the nib I really loved was this one and I did love how this pen writes. So this is the Olive. This one is called the Collection because this one's a limited edition one. Um, and this one, I did love the nib. This one is a medium nib, I believe. Yeah, so this one here is a medium nib. So I did love this one for how wet it was when it writes, but I did not love the weight. These plastic pens are super, super light. I tried to weigh it down a little bit more by adding the metal clip. The clips do not come with these pens. These are additional add-ons. But even with that, it's still very, very light to me. And then, of course, came out this pen, which I think a lot of people called the unicorn pen, but I just loved the like mother of pearl look that this had. I think it was called iridescent. And so um, this one, I just wanted to try it. I got an extra fine on this one. And this one is super, super scratchy. So not one of my favorites either, but I still love this color. So I'm keeping this one, but these two I'm sending to a friend. So as much as, you know, I would love to love them, I just know she will probably appreciate them better than me. Now my first like medium high-end pen, I guess you could call it, that I purchased was the Twisby. The reason why I purchased the Twisby is mainly because of the transparent body. I love the idea of these demonstrator pens, of being able to see what ink I have inside of them. So this was the first one. I actually found this one on Amazon, I believe. And um, this one is an extra fine nib. Now, even though this is extra fine, again, that's another brand, I do like the extra fine and I do grab this quite often. So this one has the Emerald of Chavor. I've had it in there since 2022 and it has not clogged at all. Absolutely love that ink by Jean, is it Jean Herbin, something like that. So I went on like a Twisby craze that year. The Rose Gold 2 version came out and so because I knew I wanted to use this like glitz or shimmer ink, I started getting into some larger nibs. So 
This one here is a medium nib, and I've only had a problem with it clogging once. I've only had to rinse this out, and mainly it was my fault. It just hadn't been in use. But now, since I've been using it about once every two weeks, it has not clogged on me again. Next is the larger rose gold two, again, Twisby Diamond. Um, this one is the Diamond Glitz. I love this nib. So this is the 1.1 stub nib. If you're looking for just something with a little bit of a different type of, I don't know, type of stroke as you write, this pen is really cool. I love this diamond and it's a diamond 580 rose gold too. Love that one. This one, I did not love the way I thought I would. And it's one of the first Twisbees I bought in 2022. The reason why I thought I would love it is because of the vacuum. It could have been the ink. I had a Colorverse ink in here and I just didn't love it. I did not love it with Colorverse. So I may just need to give it another shot with another ink because I have heard some say that Colorverse was a little dry for them as well. So it could have just been my ink choice. So I'm going to give it another shot. I'm not giving up on this one yet. This one is the one that is a bold. It's a bold nib. Um, so it'd be great for another, you know, glitzy, glimmery type of type of ink in it. Um, but I think I'll try it with a regular ink first just to see um, if I like it just with the bold nib. So this one is a narwhal. Again, another demonstrator. This was the Narwhal. I don't even know if they make this version anymore. There was controversy over it being too much like the Twisby. Um, I got this one through Galen Leather. It was a collab with Galen Leather and Narwhal pens, and I absolutely loved it. I had ancient diamine, ancient copper in it, and I used that ink for, I want to say, a solid year until I had no more ink. That's the only reason why this one is not inked up at this time is because I ran out of that ink. I love that ink with this pen. So that's probably my next purchase since I'm not purchasing pens at this time. I'll probably get a bottle of the Ancient Copper since I loved it so much to use in this Narwhal pen. Now, not to knock Caveco completely because there are two pens that I love by them. So this Caveco collection, um, I wanna say this is called Iguana. I have the, what's this ink called? Is it Paradise? Paradise something? It's a turquoise ink. It's beautiful. I'm on my third cartridge with this one. Let me see what size nib this is. This one is a fine nib. Absolutely love this pen. It is one of my go-tos. My favorite out of all my Cavecos so far is this one. It's a Caveco All Sport. This one is in the rose gold and the nib is a medium. Yeah, this one is a medium nib. I wanna say I've been through at least three rounds on the cartridge for this one, but that's because the Caveco cartridges, little piston filler cartridge is super, super tiny. So I think what I wanna do on this next one is just you know, get some more actual Caveco, um, Caveco compatible ink cartridges that are a little bit bigger and put that in here because I really love writing with this pen. So I was not a fan of these, these two in particular. Again, I do like the nib. I just didn't like the weight. This with the metal weight, absolutely love it. So if there is a splurge pen that I go for in 2023, it would probably be the brass. I've had my eye on the brass for this one for a long time, so that might happen in 2024. The only major pen purchase in 2023 was this one, and it was from my husband, anniversary gift. This is the Platinum 3776. 14 karat gold nib. It's my first 14 karat gold nib and absolutely love it. I think I'm on my third refill on this. Prior to this, I was using Peter Moss. Um, absolutely loved the Peter Moss. It was a beautiful green ink. Right now I have a Ferris wheel press 
and I don't remember the color, so I'll have to go back and look. But those are my colors. Um, those are all the inks that I have at this point. I keep this little Tomoe River book, A6 size, as my little swatch book as I change things. You'll see this is that olive. Absolutely love this, this width. This was very comfortable and flowy. Little scratchy, extremely scratchy. Love this one. I use it all the time, even though it's a fine nib. Love it. This one I use over and over again. I love how just juicy and flowy that particular nib is. I also love this one. So I guess I'm one of, you know, everyone has like a type that they like for, for fountain pens. And I guess what I'm finding for myself is I love a good wet pen for fountain pens. Um, with my gel pens or my rollerball pens, you know, not so much, but with fountain pens in particular, I love just the wet shine, sheen, and flow. So these are some of the inks that I had gone through. So this is where we're getting into the inks that I am currently in. This is how beautiful that stub writes. It's just, you can get, I did not write in the best handwriting, but you can just get so many different widths with it. This was the one I was not crazy about. Um, that's my Twisby Iris with a bold nib. This is a little too thick for me. I guess if I feel like if I'm writing that thick, I prefer the variation in line width that I get from the stub. So I don't know that I'm holding on to this um, Twisby Iris. We'll see. She, she may part ways with me this coming year. So this is my currently inked. This is what's in them at this time. And um, we'll see what 2024 brings. So the main thing I ended up purchasing for my fountain pens in 2023 was some sort of protection for them. All of these were originally stored in, um, in their original cases. And so I just had these boxes everywhere, but I wanted to be able to take them with me, but keep them protected, especially since my husband bought me this really nice one. So I got several products from Rickshaw directly, as well as from, um, Oh, where was it? Oh, from Goulet Pens. And so these are the ones I got from Rickshaw. This is the one specifically I got for this pen. No, you can't borrow my pen. So that was my favorite one. Um, it also has, all of these have like a Japanese pattern or design to them, which I really loved. And I went for a neutral case. It's nice, they let you customize like the bungee cord on the side, the embroidery and the interior cover. So I um, have a nice little combo case in here of being able to store those with my pens and I can fit more sleeves in here, no problem. So in here for now, I had just been, I just tossed this in here. It doesn't really need a case. Um, it's just a plastic pen. So the case itself is soft enough for it. In here, I've been saving my, this platinum pen I put on the very end because this is the one that gets rolled up first. So it's the best protective slot. Sorry, that's rubbing on the table. Next in here, I was keeping my two Caveco pens. So I have the Iguana and then the Rose Gold All Sport. These I put the pen clips over because the sleeves are pretty deep. I'll lose my pen because there's still that much of a pocket left down here. And then I have the other Twisbees that are inked. So I start with the Glitz, or what is that one? That one's not Glitz. That one is the um, Emerald of Shavor. This one is the Pink Glitz. And then this one is the real big one the blue shimmer, shimmering seas, with diamond shimmering seas. So these are the ones I take with me. These go in my meeting bag. I use these every single week. Um, they lay, I wanna say horizontal in the bottom of my bag. I had had them standing up, but I found a couple of them since they're shimmer inks, they wanna clog on me if I do that. Ugh, I'm not doing this right today. 
<clears throat> so I found that a couple of them want to clog on me if I stand them vertically. So I keep them horizontal in the bottom of my bag like this. Love the design on this. It has the Japanese um, sakura tree along with Mount Fuji and a big fountain pen on it. So this is made by Rickshaw as well. Um, these other pens I've been storing in here. So these big ones, my narwhal has been in here along with the uh, vacuum one. And then the Pilot Prera I had just stuck in here. Although I probably would let someone borrow this particular pen. So those just stack all in there. These two I'm giving away. What's nice with Caveco is it comes with a pretty decent case. So, you know, since I started with Cavecos, this is what they were originally in anyway. And like one of these cases will hold two pens. So this is how I'm going to gift it to my friend. Just give it to her in a case like this. All right. Well, that was my, those were my main purchases for and uses of fountain pens for 2023. We'll see what the 2024 story brings for me this year. Um, again, the main thing I can think of is maybe the Caveco Brass Sport. Um, but other than that, and other than inks, I don't really have a big change up plan for my fountain pens. Maybe if something just really stands out to me, but I'm really quite happy with with this selection and I've been able to reuse them multiple times already. I've learned how to clean them. That's the main thing. I really wanted to focus on maintenance this year, learning how to clean and properly care for each of my uh, fountain pens. So I feel like I really mastered that this year. Um, really proud of myself for knowing how to take care of these pens now. And you know, with the mindset of reusing and repurposing what I already have, um, I really feel comfortable with, with this collection moving forward. All right, well, that's it for today. Tell me some of your favorite fountain pens. What were some of your best purchases of 2023? Any ideas for what you want to do in 2024 with your fountain pen collection or cases or inks? I'd love to hear all about it in the comments below. I'll see you next time.